So welcome to our We Choose to Thrive series. This is um, our second book in the series, in fact, on We Choose to Thrive, and it's women deciding that it is time to heal from the pain of the past and to really enjoy life, to just choose to thrive. We introduce to you today Wendy Foster, who is, has chosen to thrive, and we're so delighted to have you on our interview today, Wendy. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. So give us a brief story about your past, something made you make a choice that you've made today. Okay, I'll make this as brief as possible, but it goes way back to my very early childhood. Some of the trauma that happened to me did include sexual abuse, and it was at such an early age that I don't have memory of it. But it came up when I was doing counselor training many, many years later. So that's one of the things. Another big uh, area of my life in my early childhood was when I was five years old, my first trip to the store, which seems young now, but it wasn't back then. I was actually mugged by a couple of teenagers, and it really uh, affected the rest of my life as far as my own safety and security and fear go. Um, I also lost my father to suicide just before my third birthday. So all of these events happened in my most formative years, and I'm just learning in the past year how much that's affected me and why it didn't have the same effect on my older siblings, which I am intrigued with and which I want to share more as the tools. So those are the initial ones, and it continued on from there. I have had uh, relationship issues. I've had um, lots of pain in my life, lots of suffering. Um, using when the pain and suffering got so bad with depression and later I found out anxiety. Of course, my way to handle the pain was to numb it out in mm -hmm. any way. A lot of that okay. was escape and running away. Some of it was with alcohol. Luckily, I didn't get into any drugs that would have maybe taken me out of this world altogether. And the most significant has been in the past couple of years. I'll back up one more time. In 2011, no, sorry, 2009, I think it was. I'm getting my years mixed up. Back in that time frame, uh, I had uh, gone through a divorce. I felt the most powerful I'd ever been in my life because I was starting out as a new coach. So that was 2004, actually 2004. But years later, um, I had a major breakdown after my divorce and uh, found out some of the secrets that were in our family, in my, my own family with my husband and the business, um, really pulled the rug out from underneath me. He had disappeared out of the country, and then I found out the business was failing desperately. It was like a half a million dollars in debt. Mm -hmm. So there was too many pressures, and I decided, you know what? I am not a good mom to my daughter. I just want to check out. And that was my first attempt at suicide back then, and I was mm -hmm. hospitalized. So I had a wake-up call then, went on with life, um, and a few other things happened. And then a year ago, let me get the time frame right, last Last August, so less than a year ago, some of this stuff was coming up again, and the anxiety was getting so great, and I didn't understand it, and I was in a space of being frozen, and the, the least little thing would affect me, mm -hmm. and it got to the point where, again, I just, I just couldn't handle it. I was crying. I, I didn't want to get up. I, didn't, I couldn't handle the menial tasks of business and whatnot, um, and I ended up in the hospital again. Uh, Ten days later, it happened again. And I thought, okay, you know what? I obviously need some help, and I'm not getting the help that I need. I was never diagnosed with anything more than depression um, and alcohol abuse, and I knew there was something more. So finally, on this second attempt in, two, in ten days, a doctor told me, gave me a list of traits, and the tears started pouring out of my eyes because I recognized myself in many of those traits. And it was almost like, well, how could you possibly know this about me all of my life? And right after the relief, he said to me, you have borderline personality disorder, not full-blown. And I went, oh, there's actually a name. <laughs> there's That's a name right. for this. <laughs> I'm not crazy after all. <laughs> and right after that came a thought, oh my gosh, that's a label, that's a stigma. There's a lot of stuff attached around that. And I had this one side of fear and one side of empowerment. So I chose to go into the empowerment and do some research and study. And in this past um, several months, I've learned so, so much about why I did what I did, the behaviors that came up, 
things that didn't make sense to me, hiding from things, running from things, pain. Uh, and now I'm using these tools that I used to teach a lot of, but not on this level. I didn't know about this particular disorder. It wasn't well known back in the day when I did counselor training. Um, so I dove into research. In fact, my first appointment with a, a psychiatrist, I'd already gone in with uh, six modules from counselor training online where I'd passed the tests of uh, learning about or taking programs on the, wow. the therapy. She said, you're the only client I've ever had that's done that. So what brings me to today is it's a never-ending journey. Things that happen to us, my very first job was a preschool teacher, an, or sorry, an early childhood educator. No wonder, you know, my trauma that happened, I wanted to protect children all my life, and I still do. So all of the things that I've done in my life have been to heal myself. I just didn't know it at the time. Mm -hmm. I wanted to protect other people. I wanted to make sure no children were abused, no children were robbed or physically assaulted, none of that. Then I came into adults, then I came into help all people, be a counselor. Then it became, well, that gets pretty heavy. Let's do coaching. So <laughs> everything has evolved, and all the skills and tools that I've learned, and including my very first skills, actually, as an early childhood educator, are the ones I'm using most now to help people and help myself, because I see the five-year-old in everybody. That's I see, true. I see the hurt, wounded person, and I know that they need a voice. They need a place to stand. They need a place to, they need somebody to talk to. And they need somebody that, that my whole thing is no judgment, no blame, sh no shame, no guilt. Right. Just love. Love and skills and tools. And well, you know, we know how to help somebody when they have a broken arm or a broken leg. But when it comes to the mind, we, it's, there's such a stigma that goes with it. And also, People just don't know what to do with it and how to help the best. And so this is really an important key. And I so admire that the, the tenacity because at some points it is the thought of checking out because we're not good enough or because we're tired of the pain is very real. And, and we don't like to admit that, but it is very real. Yes. And also sometimes... The pain, also the pain that we cause others. Yes. When yeah. we the, the damage that you're doing to your family, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's, it's just, it's overwhelming sometimes. And, and these are some very real issues that many of us face, but very seldom is it talked about. We keep Absolutely. it hidden away. So you've done so much to, to, in your healing journey, and now you're giving back. You're doing a lot of amazing things to give back, and which is, commendable and I find that when we step up and we stand on our story instead of wallow in it yes. then that's when the change begins so in your process this is what I've observed from you because I met you what a little over a year ago and there was still some some tough times that you were experiencing yes. Yes. Um, what made you just decide all right it's time I make some changes Okay, when I had that last breakdown, it was such an eye-opener. But the thing that really happened, and this is quite amazing, I'm a very spiritual person, but I'm not religious. Me but neither, yeah. I was in the hospital in Vancouver for four days, and when I came home, we had a family meeting. My daughter came up, and that night, so Sunday night, when I went to bed, all night long, something was happening to me that I can't describe other than an awakening. There was a healing going on. There was lots of, lots of light and like glowing. And it was as if I was holding in my hand a, a golden, like a, a ball. And each of those balls held a memory, a, tra a traumatic memory. And as the memory came, it just came very quickly and very lightly. And it showed itself. And it just went, bing. And that's how I best can des describe it. And that happened all night long. I only slept two hours that night. And I woke up ecstatic because there was a voice at the end of that said you're not going anywhere you got work <laughs> we have work for you to do, <laughs> you work to do and you have to do it and uh, you're not going anywhere we need you the world needs you and you need to be bigger than you have ever been before um, and rather than go into fear with that I went into extreme excitement and I couldn't stop talking all day Sunday. My family thought I'd just gone off the rocker. You're like, what is up with yeah, her? You shouldn't, be, you shouldn't even be able to walk. You should be, you know, like vegging on the couch for a week and recovering. And instead I'm like, oh my God, I have so much work to do. I have so much, I have so many people to help. 
Um, this is something that I, I have, the reason I had to go through this again and again and again is to make sure that I was so super strong that I can stand up to any criticism, any judgment, any blame, shame, guilt, dropping of relationships, whatever gets thrown at me, because it will. It will, and it does. That's the nature of being human, and we get the good with the bad. So I thought, there, if there are, there are. There are. It's, it's like sexual abuse has one in three. Mental health issues have one in four. And that's, of course, that's under, under the radar. Oh, yes. Um, so, and if we really knew for sure the true figures, oh, we, there's no way to know them, you know, the true figures. No, and it's probably double that. Yeah. Um, so that, that fires me up because... Mm -hmm. I love, and I, di I discovered this on the weekend, last weekend, that I absolutely love sharing with people because I can see, and you talked about this before with your interviews, you can see in the people's faces. Or the ones that, obviously the ones that come running up to you, like tears pouring down their eyes and you rec they recognize themselves in you and, and vice versa. But there's also the ones in the audience that go, oh my God. The ones that won't speak up, but you can see it in their faces, you know. And it's amazing because you can look across the audience and nobody has to say. No. We know. But we know. We know. Yeah. Yeah. And so the first time when I did this at uh, Best Kept Secret, not the first time, but last time in Parksville, there were 60 women, powerful women in the room. And I knew I was going to share it, but didn't know when. And the time came right up after uh, a lady did an awesome presentation, which they all are, but she, it was about courage and courage begets courage. And I went, okay, there's my cue because I stood up there fully in my power, shared about it and 15. So that's like a quarter, or, you know, that's the one in four actually came up. Uh, and I made a declaration that I'm going to be the face of transformation. And I didn't get it till the weekend when I was standing in front of 1,200 <laughs> people. Oh, it's actually my face, not just <laughs> my, my face. face. <laughs> it's actually my face. And rather than be afraid again, I'm just being empowered. And the, the people that come up to me from uh, the, the Women's Hospital and Shoppers Drug Mart, they do such amazing uh, work for uh, women's health, mental health issues. The people that came up from Ontario, even the, you know, the president of the company, um, and I'm thinking, well, why, you know, this is such a big special thing. Because <laughs> I forget that there are so many that don't have that voice, and I used to be that way. Oh, I think there's a whole lot of us, and the more we do, the more we stand up on and be able to, to be that face of transformation, the more we help others to do the same. We, we, we rise we, we help our world rise. And, and that's what our whole goal with We Choose to Thrive is. It's so, so very important. So what would you say, Wendy, to someone that's just going into these stages where you were, where I have been, where we realize, I don't want to live this way anymore. Yes. It's time I rise up and do something about it. What would you say to them? First off, Make sure you have support. My family, my husband, and my in-laws, we all cohabit here, are absolutely amazing. Without them, this, none of it would be possible. So first, get your circle of support that's immediate. And as you know and I know, get your girlfriends. Get your, and not, I don't just mean your friends' friends. I mean your support friends, like our Best Kept Secret group, your Woman I Love group. Um, things like that where you can truly be inspired and inspire others. It's so important to have that sisterhood. It is. It's, that, so it's that's key. Me. If you don't have that, and if you back away from that, it's too hard to do it on your own. I mean, yes. you can, but you know, it's not. This is not me doing this. This is not you doing this. This is a whole bunch of people coming together, like you say, arm in arm, and saying, "We've got this, and we're mm -hmm. going to change the world. We're going to, you know, we're going to eradicate." sexual abuse and physical abuse and emotional abuse and, and mental abuse and mental health issues that come from all that abuse and and we will do it together i truly believe that and it it may not be in our lifetime but the legacy will move you know on. we're starting we get it we're getting the ball rolling and the awareness the more the awareness grows the more that people stop and realize where they are and what's what's happening and the more we change the tide and this is the only way it's going to get done and like you say, and all the other women say too, you need to, for me, I, I love to research. So whenever I need to learn something about myself or about some tools and skills, I immediately go into some research. 
And it feeds my soul because I, it's the recognition of, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So now I know. And then I can share it. So books, tools, resources, websites, um, different speakers that are, you know, I've, I've recommended a lot, numerous women to, uh, to your Facebook page and to join the group because they're, they're just starting to speak out. They need a, they need a group, a community of women who understand. Some of them are in all different phases. So if they're just in the beginning phase, they need the women who've been there for a while. Well, that's what I found in my group um, when I started it. It's been not even a year ago. And many of them that joined were in need of just lots of encouragement and help. And now when the new ones join and they're telling where they are and what they're facing, it's them that comes up sometimes before I even get a chance to see it and respond. They're stepping in and jumping in and saying, hey, you know, let us help you. It is amazing. And, and that's where you know you're on the right track. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. And that's exactly the same kind of path for me. I don't know what it looks like yet. I don't know how. I just know I'm doing it. Um, well, you know, one of the things that um, has transpired since we published our first We Choose to Thrive book is that we have formed an international organization and we will be going into communities and speaking and we need our army of advocates. It's called Women Up Internet international with our million women message movement we would need women like you to stand on our stages because yes. there's where I have my area of expertise we have somebody that's been terrible experience with cyber stalking and she's mm -hmm. gone on to lead the world in fact writing a book right now to yes. about that you know it's every facet of it that you don't have the skill set I don't have the skill set for that but she does and now she's now she's an attorney she went, oh, she passed four people that have faced cyber stalking. And uh, it's, it takes all of us to break that cycle because that's what is needed. And as we powerfully go into communities, even the smaller communities, yes. and, and let our voices be heard, that's when, our, when the transformation begins. You know, you just made me think of something. They always say it takes a community or a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. Well, it takes this kind of army, as you will, or a group of women, supporters, to raise the child inside of us that was wounded. Very, Not very so good. We are creating that new community that we didn't possibly have when we were younger. I like that. And I do want to say something there. There, you know, like a lot of people go, well, you know, are you blaming your parents for this? And are you blaming your perpetrators? And I say no, because... Wounded people, hurt people, hurt people. Yes. Something happened to them, and they, they don't have the skills and tools to deal with it. Like when you said you, break the, you broke the cycle, your dad told you you broke the cycle in your family. Mm -hmm. It's because you learned some tools and skills they didn't have. Right. And now you're passing it on not only to your own family, but you're passing it on to the world. Correct, and, yeah. And that's how we're going to do this. It's women stepping up, and not just women, but we're mostly talking about women really stepping up, stepping way the heck out of your comfort zone and saying, yes. Oh, well, by far. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Well, I love being on stage, but I don't necessarily like to say, you know, my brain's all scrambled. <laughs> Although I did say, I did mention that, that jokingly on the weekend with 1,200 people. I said, you know, when I learned that uh, the wiring in our brain actually gets uh, disjointed when we're younger, I said, well, I don't want to go around in the world with a scrambled brain, so now that I know how to rewire it, I'm doing that. And, it, and I thought, oh, wow, that was kind of... <laughs> <laughs> but yes, you know but what? it's true. It is exactly uh, that. I picture. think yes. when we add humor to these very, very serious topics that nobody wants to talk about, it lightens it up a little bit, so it, it gives that little inch of room for that one person to speak, even if it's just to one other person. Mm -hmm. And my best... Sure. My message there was, you know, if it, since it's one in four at the very, very least, then talk to somebody because when we start talking, we can change that. Well, I think there's been many, many, many that have gone to their grave without saying a word. Yes. And that's got to stop because they could, many, many people could have lived a lot longer and really enjoyed life and been happy and changed things in their own families, their own communities, in their own world if they had had the love and support that they needed and the knowingness that there's many, many out there just like them that have chosen to rise above it. And that sisterhood and what we are creating now is a sisterhood. Yes. And, and yes, men affect the same way. And I personally feel that 
a man needs to lead the men. I, I truly believe that too, and that's why I've you know, narrowed my focus to women. I do include children with that because uh, they just go hand in hand. Right. The women and, are and, usually the caregivers for the children. And we're not, we're not um, leaving men out of the equation. They're no. very important to our lives. They're fabulous creatures. Yes. <laughs> but they, there needs to be strong men that lead the men because we are just very different from each other. You know, Absolutely. and um, so that's that. You know, that said, it, it's all of us that need to heal, but this is about us as women. Absolutely. So, yeah. And like you said, like it's so the power of our voice. You know, I said this on uh, Joe's stages at Best Kept Secret for for a while now. You know, I've always wanted to be seen and be heard, uh, and I was on the stage. I was seen and I was heard, but I wasn't showing up where I needed to be seen and heard. And in service of other people, and I think that's the switch for me. I've got a little bit of it here and there about being of service. Now I'm like, you know what? This is all about service. If, if this was about me, I would step back and say, no, 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 But because it's about so many people who are hurting and in pain, I can't not do it anymore. Correct. And it yeah. took me to the phase of, okay, Wendy, I'm going to, you know, the universe, um, Kyle C says we all work for the universe. I love that. So the universe has told me, if you don't pick up your socks and get going on with this, I'm going to fire you. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want them to fire you, so let's do that. So, and that's a big stand. And I, and I said at that event, um, I'm not just talking about my community or Vancouver Island or BC. I'm starting here. But I'm talking worldwide. This is a worldwide movement. This is a worldwide movement. I will be on the stage of sharing my story from my heart with my humor because there are so many people that, that will then take a step, whatever that is for them, even if it's they just tell a friend. Mm -hmm. And then it just opens up that space for them for that extra little bit of healing and then takes away a little of that pain. And they know they're not alone, like you say, because isolation is a killer. It is. And it is, especially in all of these areas of abuse and, and mental Ill I don't even like to say mental illness, mental health issues. I like to focus on the positive. And, um, you know, back to the suicide thing. I've been an advocate. I'm not for suicide. I've been an advocate for pe protecting people's reputation with that because nobody knows what pain they went through. That's right. And I have, I have known um, people that are leaders in the community that, that have been there. Oh. And, and, you know, it, it's something that there's many, many of us have faced those decisions. And, you know, personally, I have four family members that chose that, that is yes. a way. And the pain that it brings the rest of the family is heartbreaking yes. because it takes years to overcome as a family. And, yes. and so I totally can relate because there was times I considered it myself just because of the pain and feeling like I'm not worth anything to my family yes. um, just because of how I was feeling. And, um, so we, we understand the depth of where, where that is and how far it can take you. But they, each one of us that face those have made a choice. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now that we're getting these tools and, and these information and, and groups out there, um, you know, it's happening younger and younger. I just, my mom just told me the other day that uh, one of her friend's grandchildren, 21-year-old, committed suicide. Yeah. I and had a nephew that was that age. It's so sad. Yeah. You know, what we're doing right now with this movement and all the movements that are going on, there is a big shift happening. We're going to go in and we're going to embrace those children. And we're going to prevent a lot of this from happening. And they're going to get these skills and tools early. Oh, so they don't have to so go. So thankful. <laughs> 60, 80 years of something that could be, you know, non-existent. Yes. And yes, are we going to have pains in our life? You bet. We're human. We're going to have bumps and bruises and get knocked down again and again and again. And it's a matter of, okay, great. Have somebody there to help pick you up when you need it. You pick somebody else up when, when you need it, when they need mm -hmm. it. In fact, I think a lot of the healing, I think what's going to keep me super strong in my life from this day forward is making a bigger and bigger difference. It and does. If I, start to, if I start to go into any of my stuff, It'll be like, okay, Wendy, there's your wake-up call. Go bigger. Well, and you have, you're building a support around you, too. 
Um, yeah. And I find that even for myself, as I've started Women Up International, there's times I get exhausted. And, you know, because there's just, there's a lot of pieces going into this. And then one of my sisters, yeah, just like you, will say, okay, don't you think you need to take a little break here for a few yeah. minutes? <laughs> you know, and, and it's true because I'm, I have such a passion for this that I'll just keep going, 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 going. Yes. And, and there's times where it just becomes very overwhelming because you're, you're working with so many different people on so many different levels. And, um, you know, so you have to also honor you, you and love you, you know, so to take care of that. Yes. Thank you so very much for, for taking the time for this interview, for being involved in our We Choose to Thrive. And we will have you on our stages. Absolutely. Because we will be, be watching, going to I'll be watching Women Up International and joining in whenever, whenever I can be of service. Wonderful. Awesome. Well, very Thank good. You. Thank you so much.